My name is Elvira Barry Ashby, and I've um, always, always loved reading. I can remember even my parents reading to me when I was really tiny. And, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, in school and stuff, I really enjoyed writing as well. So, so I guess I've always had that in my life. Mm. Um, yeah, and I remember, especially when I got around uh, 10, 11, I think, in this really, really uh, book, Sluka Olden in Swedish, <laughs> was that? When uh, you book, crazy, <laughs> teenage. Age. Yeah, yes, maybe. Yeah. And then I, I would, you know, at, at, this, at the summer house, uh, just, just, you know, bring like a big pile of books there and just uh, disappear into mm. them. And I know my my f family would holler when it was food and stuff, and I wouldn't hear because I was so into, into it. I am, uh, <laughs> that's very funny. Um, my name is David Ashby, and uh, I, I, I'm a writer and a teacher, and um, I, I always loved uh, reading as well. And I think I was an only child, and I didn't have a lot of friends at school. I was uh, one of the unpopular kids. So uh, I didn't have much friends. So I really lost myself in, in books, and that, that was the best thing. And um, it was the, the sort of Narnia books and, and Paddington Bear, Stigger the Dump, um, you know, so, so many. And then comics. I used to love reading all the Marvel comics and the DC comics. And so it was like I, I could be the superhero. I could be the Aslan's champion, I could be everything. So that, that, was, that was one of the best things. Um, so yeah, so I've always, I've always loved it. And at school I had excellent English teachers who used to encourage me to read. And so we'd read the set text, but then uh, they'd say, oh, I think you'd really like to read uh, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, say, so we think you should read this. And, uh, so that was, that was, yeah, that was how I started reading. We both have this like, love of books mm -hmm. so we uh, we've read to our kids a yes. lot yeah that's true and that was one of the nicest things i guess about uh, when the children came because i mean we've, we've i've always read anyway but um when the when the kids came and then it's bedtime stories then you start to read not only the books that you used to love when you were a, a child to them but also you, you start to explore the new writers who are around and you, you get the, 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 the things you read about in, in the newspaper reviews and, and you read them with the children and you think, well, God, this is really good. I'm really enjoying this. It's a new uh, era. Um, so it's been a lot of fun having the children and, and to share the new stories with them and the, and the books with them. It's been, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and I'm a, a speech and language therapist, um, logoped in Swedish. So I've worked uh, a lot with children's books to boost children's language development. As a, as a speech and language therapist, I, I see kids who are you know, late in their uh, language development. And, and books are, are brilliant for, for boosting vocabulary. And, uh, and then um, that's how my, my first uh, book series came to be as well, that I had a, an idea for, for books, how, the, how um, to, to make them like extra speech and language boosting. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, and that was really when the kids were, I'd met you mm -hmm. and uh, the kids were small and I was at home um, with, with, uh, with Sam. First, <laughs> with Sam, yeah. yes. Uh, yes. Right. And then, you, and then yeah. you, you actually uh, wrote the first one and you got your dad to illustrate it, didn't you? Your yes. dad did some nice uh, pictures with it. That yeah. You would read to them. Yes. And um, yeah, and I brought it, um, uh, I found a, so we read it, it was like a bedtime story as well. So we read it with my, my uh, dad's illustrations for, for Sam every night for a while when mm. he was going to go to sleep. Um, and then I remember I was looking for a publisher, so I sent it to places um, first, but, but had no replies really. And then um, I went to a, a like um, a, a small book fair um, with specializing a little bit in these sort of uh, um, extra uh, ed educational books maybe and I had Sam with me in, in, a, in a pram and then I came got talking to a, a, um, a then quite small publishing uh, 
how how then for log who who had that as a niche this uh, so my my books for small kids they had like uh, baby signing in them so you can like boost um yeah and we used to do that with, the, with our, our kids too. We used to do the things, and it was, it was fantastic because you would teach them before they could really talk. You would teach them that if they wanted more, it was more, more <laughs> food, and, and they wanted the lamp on. Yeah. And, it was, and it, was, it was fun to see yeah. that even though they couldn't talk, when, when Sam had finished eating, for example, he'd go, and you knew he wanted more Marmite sandwiches. Yes, yeah, so and the sign for more is actually like this. But oh, we're quite <laughs> yeah, he was more, more. It was extra yeah. Marmite sandwiches. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and, and then uh, I, I suppose if you want to uh, talk about um, how, I, how, I, how I started uh, writing and things. So I, um, yeah, I, I used to love to, uh, to read, and English was my favorite subject at school. And it was nice to be encouraged you know, to write stories and to, and to, and to make things up. And uh, I, used to, I used to really love that. that. That was fantastic. And then when I left school, I didn't want to stop writing. So uh, I remember one of the first things I, I started to do, I was a big... Elvis Presley fan as well and there used to be this thing called uh, Elvis Monthly and it was every month it makes sense when every month there was an Elvis magazine and the articles were written by Elvis fans and it was like you know reviews and what they thought about certain songs and and I was 16 and the new Elvis album had come out and I thought oh this is really good maybe I could write a review of this and I could I could I could send it off to Elvis Monthly so I, I wrote the review and I sent it off and I was really surprised next month there it was and there's something magical about you open it and that's something you've written and 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 uh, it's your name is there and you know other people are reading it and it's mm -hmm. and that, that that really encouraged me so I started writing a lot for Elvis Monthly magazine and, and uh, I go back and read some of them now and they're very odd but uh, it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed doing it so I used to do that and then I started writing poems and uh, I used to send them to magazines and stuff. A couple of them were published. Um, so that was my, yeah, I, that was my, my thing about writing. And uh, I, I had, you feel you have to do it. You, you have mm -hmm. to write the stories. You have to write the poems. So I wrote little short stories, poems, articles. Yeah, and it was, it was, it was you could lose yourself. There's a very good book called uh, What Color Is Your Parachute? And it's a job hunting guide, ostensibly it's, it's a job hunting guide. But um, it's also about finding your mission in life, finding what you're meant to do in life. And one of the really good uh, pieces of advice it gives you in the book, it says, if the thing that you're doing, time just stops, time just disappears, then that's what you're meant to be doing. And I found that with writing, that when I was writing, it's like, Oh, is, is it is it is it bedtime already? It, it's mm. yeah. So I felt that's that's what I was meant to be doing. Mm. Yeah, but now we're we're sort of different mm. in 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 our uh, aren't we? Because I need mm. to write like something quite regularly. Yeah. Otherwise, I go edgy if I haven't had time to just sit down and write a, li a little. Mm. It's mm. not um, yeah. But you you can go long. I can, go, uh, I can go long periods without doing it, but then when I do it, then I, I, I do it in one blurge, I yes. guess. I guess. <laughs> so it, it's, yeah, so we, we're quite different in the, in yeah. the way that we write. I, I guess you have a lot of writing in your everyday work as well. Yes, because as well as, as a writer, I also w work as a, 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 an English teacher and like a proofreader and a translator as well. So I, I'm reading a lot of um, things that other people have worked on and giving them advice and I'm writing comments and so so yeah I, i'm doing a lot of, of that anyway and also preparing stuff for the for the for the, for the lessons i'm doing things there so it, it's yeah mm. it's a little bit different whereas at your work you're doing a lot of you know seminars and mm. marketing and things like that and, yeah and yeah i guess and also i think for me that that writing process now is lots about it, it's the same as reading you you sort of go into another world and you can let go of all the mm. worries of everyday life and you know everything you can yeah it's it's really mm. the same both mm. reading and writing for me it's it's um, it's restful mm. <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah. Now, Vera always amazes me that, that if, if I'm writing, I, I have to sit at the computer and I, I'm sitting there. But she can do any, any, anywhere. So, you know, so lying on the beach or on the bed, or, and she, can, she can do one hand. And I, I'm very. <laughs> so, I'd yeah. rather do that. It yeah. doesn't feel like work then. Yeah. You have to sit by the computer. It's yeah, I, I feel work. I have to sit there and it's, it's a job for whatever. But it's, yeah, that, that's how we do it. So we're quite different in the way mm. that we do it. But it's, yeah, it's quite fun that yeah. we both ended up doing the same thing. Um, yeah. yeah, I think for me it was the, the fact that I got these first uh, children's books um, um, published that it was like it just made it clear that it was possible. I mean, otherwise you think, oh, an author, that would be lovely to, you know, to, to write books. And, <coughs> but you think it's not that it's impossible, almost. Mm. But uh, yeah, that just yeah made me realize that yes one can actually and then then i just went <laughs> kept writing from there together we actually we span the whole human life yeah don't we? yeah we, did. <laughs> we have true. for one year for like one year olds and then up to you know kids and mm. and and, older yeah, and then teenagers adults, kids and yeah. adults <laughs> you know yeah. we yeah yeah but it's, it's interesting how it, 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 it sort of worked out as well because um when you, when you said about how it, it's magical to be an author and you didn't mm. think it could happen. And uh, there, was a tie, there was a thing that happened, happened to me because I, I used to do all the stories and the poems and things. And I always thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I could actually be a proper author one day and, and, and tell proper stories and, and things. But I had a, a, a girlfriend years and years ago and she was really into sort of esoteric things like um, uh, fortune telling and uh, crystal ball gazing and things. And um, I went with her uh, to a place and I, I saw a fortune teller and she was looking at my hand and, and she said, um, uh, she said, I can, I can well, what, what do you want to do with your life? And I said, well, I'd like to be, obviously I'd like to, you know, have, I'd like to be married, have children. I'd like to, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to be a writer. I'd like to, and she said, she said, I can see, she said, you're going to have a very long life and I, I 56 and I'm not dead yet so that, that's that's <laughs> that's going okay she said I can see that you're going to get married that's true and I said she's I can see that uh, you're going to live abroad that was that was right that worked out you're going to have two children she said uh, and we've got two lovely children which is good but I'm afraid she said I, I don't you're never going to be a published author she said it's, it's never going to work you, you're, you, you're um, one of your children is going to be a very successful author but, we'll but see not which you one. yeah, no. yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, but so, so it was quite nice to prove her wrong when, when, when I mean, everything else was right. But uh, yeah, I did get a book published. So that was, that was, that was, that was nice uh, to, yeah, uh, prove fate wrong, which is good. Yes, I, I, good you did. But you said, didn't you, 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 you were a bit angry with it when I told you that because you yes, thought that maybe she had put the kibosh on me. Or yes, I mean, some, some, there would be people who would just give up and think, no, it's never going to happen to me. Yeah. I mean, whatever, you know, thing you have, that's your thing. Um, you know, you should, you should go for it. Yeah. And, uh, and fortune tellers should not say <laughs> that you will never succeed because, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. true. But Elvira was a real inspiration uh, because um, her books uh, came out. And uh, she started writing more. And, and I, I guess I should say that, that when, when sort of life takes over, and, and, and I, I, I wasn't doing the writing quite as much as I had done before. I mean, I'd written, I started to write a few things. That there's a, um, in Sweden, there's uh, an English language website for Swedish uh, news, uh, the local, the local.se. And I, I was writing a few stories uh, for them, sort of funny things. And I, so I was getting a few things done, but I, I'd sort of, uh, yeah, I, with the children and the work, mm -hmm. I, I'd stop writing properly, I guess. And then Alvira um, had her books published, and I thought, wow, it's, it's you know, it's, it can happen. It can, it can do it. <laughs> it yeah. no, I know, I didn't think if she, if she could do it, anybody could do it. No, I wasn't uh, thinking thank that. Thank you. <laughs> so, and then um, with, with, uh, uh, what, what happened was that uh, one uh, day we'd been, we'd been shopping and we were all walking back from the shops um, and uh, it was a, I think it was a spring day it was really the, the sun was out it was lovely the sun was shining and I saw uh, something glinting on the, on, on, on the ground and I stopped to see what it was and I, from a distance it looked like a little tiny book 
But in fact, it was just a little stone, I think, and the way the sun was shining, it made it look like a book. But I, I picked it up and I, I started talking to the children. I made up a little story. I said, imagine if this was a little book. Imagine if there's a little book. And imagine a goblin had dropped the book. And, uh, and then he was, he was coming back to look for it. And, uh, and because it was so bright, there were some really sharp shadows around of the trees and things. And I said, and imagine if, if, if when he came back, we couldn't, we couldn't see him or we couldn't see his dog, but we could see the shadows, but not him. Wouldn't that be a bit spooky? And I started to make up this story as we were walking home. And uh, the children were really listening and they were into it. And when we got home, Elvira said, oh, you should, you should write that down. And I thought, oh, maybe I should. So I started to write it down. And, uh, and uh, I wrote it down. And then every night, I would read it to the children as a bedtime story. And I would get feedback from them. Mm. They said, oh, that, that, I, I like that. Oh, I know what's going to happen next. Or, yeah, they're and, really good test audience. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> they, and and, yeah. if, and if, if, if I, I said something that they didn't like, they would say, oh, no, we don't think that's right. And then I'd maybe change it. And so uh, it was with them that I started to, 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 to write yeah. the book. And it, it sort of really became a book just, just from telling mm. them. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and then once uh, I, I was writing, I saw on Twitter that uh, Sarah O'Dodina, she, she's an editor. She was the editor uh, behind the Harry Potter series. Um, and uh, she also has worked with uh, Neil Gaiman and Louis Sakar, I think she was Sakar, the Holes uh, author. Um, so she's really very popular and big in, in children's, uh, uh, children's fiction. She was doing uh, an open submission period where uh, she said she wanted people um, to send her the first 10,000 words of their story uh, direct to her and she would read it and she would she would see what she thought so I I'd, I'd sent the first 10,000 words and I was really surprised when after a while she she got back in touch and said oh can I see the rest of it so I sent the rest of it in uh, and uh, I was even more surprised when she came back and said, oh, I really like it. Um, could, could, we, could you maybe work a bit on it? Uh, so we, she gave me some suggestions and some ideas and things I could change, things she didn't like. Um, so I did that. And then she said, yeah, we'd like to publish it. So uh, that was with uh, Pushkin Press or, or, or Pushkin uh, Children's. It's their children's imprint. And um, yeah, and it, it, it came out with a very nice cover by a very talented uh, uh, artist, uh, Jen Katoon, which is really good. Um, yeah, and it, it came out, and I was really surprised um, that I had Don't a book. Don't be surprised. It's excellent. <laughs> it's excellent. Yeah. Nothing surprising but, 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 there. But while I was writing um, this, you were also, because I think, ha explain how it happened with your grown-up books and your adult <laughs> books. <laughs> yes. Uh, I had um, more sort of children's books out and then we had um, uh, we uh, spent quite long summers at the summer house and there I like to read sort of romance novels in the summer it's the best but I ran out <laughs> there was no there was no uh, there's nothing to read on the beach and uh, then I thought oh I can I can write my own so I started and it was really uh, lots of of uh, I really enjoyed it. And it's also that thing about, you know, getting to be in another world and a little, not that this world, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with it, no. <laughs> but you know, sometimes mm. one just needs to, you know, see, uh, be somewhere else for a little. Mm. And um, yeah, so, uh, so yes, th then it turned into two. Grindvaktiskan and Bröllopsbyrån that are in, in uh, shops mm -hmm. now. And um, yeah. yeah, but it was fun because we, we I mean, obviously, I <laughs> wrote them, but it was nice because we, we, I mean, and, and the same with uh, with Gribble Bob that we helped each other out, didn't we? So, so for example, with uh, as well as the children uh, giving me feedback, <laughs> Elvira would as well. She would say with with Gribble, she said, "Oh, you know, maybe it would be better if you did it this way, or you can get rid of that." So, so she really helped me, and then. With, with her books, when she was, um, uh, she, she would give me chapters to read and she yeah. would ask me. And mm. sometimes there were. And I like to discuss with yes, you. Yes, exactly. I, I like when I get stuck somewhere. I don't know what's going to happen in this scene or it, it, it needs something more or what, how can I make this bit more interesting or, you know, then I want to I wanna 
uh, use me as a sounding board. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you often have very good uh, yeah. ideas and, and stuff that I can use. But but you you don't want to in your process when you actually are writing you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to know. No. <laughs> no. I get the right afterwards yeah. and then I. Yeah, it's, it is interesting how, how we're different, but, yeah. but it's, it's fun. Like, it's, it's really nice to talk about it with mm. Elvira and, and, and give her some mm. suggestions and ideas. Mm. And she uses me as like a research assistant as well, because yeah. sometimes <laughs> she'll say, OK, well, in here, uh, what, what sort of a song would they be listening yeah. to? Uh. Or what's, and that, 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 that's quite fun um, to, to sort of do that. Um, so, yeah, so, so um, uh, and, and she's also been using me because she's, she's uh, been writing a new book and it's uh, set in the Second World War in Stockholm. And she was asking me, could you find out a little yes, bit about it? Cause because this, I mean, I like to learn stuff and I like, you know, but the actual, the actual researching, <laughs> I'd rather, <laughs> somebody just told me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a lot of fun, because I, 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 I was finding stuff out about how, how Stockholm was like the Casablanca of the mm. North in, in the Second World War. And it, it's very interesting. So I'd feed it into Elvira and then she would use it in the book. Mm. And it was so. Uh, yeah. And, and, and it, it's very good as well because I've written uh, another one uh, now. And Elvira's sort of translated mm. it into Swedish. And, and she says it's better in Swedish than it is in English because she's made lots of changes to it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just a bit. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. So, so, so now she says I have, to, I have to go through it again, the Swedish version, mm -hmm. and also the English one. Yes, and, and we just uh, tightened it a bit. Yes, so yeah. that's, uh, but, but now you're, you're reading that to Tilly, mm. uh, a daughter, as a, as a bedtime story. Mm. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, mm. it's quite fun how that has worked out. Yes, and I think this, this sort of, uh, um, um, for this, the books for this age, like nine, uh, 12, mm. uh, or teenage, for teenagers as well. I, I, I like to read them myself, mm. because often in, in these, um, you need to get to the story quicker, you need to get to the point, and then there needs to be action mm. quicker, because, you know, they, they won't stay mm. if it's slightly boring for a while first mm. for the young readers and that's quite nice we we talked before about you know that there's so so much um, that is competing for your time mm -hmm. <laughs> or now with the screens and phones and that mm. you sometimes fall out of reading in a way that so for me that it, it works sometimes to go this young uh, adult or mm. that to read mm. those and then you get into it and you uh, again mm. And yeah, I really enjoyed <laughs> reading that. Yeah. Well, I, I think when, when I, <coughs> when I'm, uh, have a story, it it's often starts with just a little nugget of something. Like with, with Gribble Bob's Book of Unpleasant Goblins, there it was, I started telling the story about, about finding the little book uh, in, in, in the ground. Other, it, so stories can come from all sorts of places. I mean, um, the, the one that I finished to follow up Gribble Bob, um, that came from um, just I was reading a book of um, English folklore. And uh, it's lots of different stories about uh, different legends and, and what have you. And there was a story about, because my, my hometown is Brighton in the UK, uh, which is in the county of Sussex. And I was reading about the Sussex knucker holes, which even though I'm from Sussex, I hadn't really heard about them before. And, and a knucker hole apparently is like you come across this very, it, it looks like a quite a, a, a very small patch of water a little bit, and you think it's a bit shallow, but apparently they're meant to be really, really deep. And in the knucker hole, the knucker lives, and the knucker's like some sort of sea monster, water monster. And so I heard that, and, I was, and then I was just thinking, wow, that would be really interesting. And it, it sort of got me thinking about what could happen if somebody fell down the knucker hole and what would happen to them. and so. So, so um, I, I came up with this, with this idea, and then I, I'm a little bit different from Elvira, because Elvira, she likes to plan often the story uh, ahead, but, but I don't really know where it's going. When I start to write, I've got a rough idea, but, but yeah, I, I, just, I, just start, I just start to write, and I, and I see where it, it takes me. <laughs> 
and it's there in you know after the the start is really good but then here <laughs> <laughs> that's where i want to tighten it yeah. a bit because i as a wife <laughs> and avid reader yeah. can hear that he doesn't know now and then and then it picks and up again, it picks up again yeah. yeah yeah so there's this period i guess in in the middle of the, of the story well i'm not quite sure where i'm going and then uh, once I, I come over, often with Elvira's help, <laughs> over that little hump, and then I know how it's going to go, and then it gets better at the end as well. So the, the beginnings aren't, the middles aren't too good. Um, so, so yeah, so that, 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 that's where the idea comes from. And then I just have to sit down, and it all sort of comes out in a way. I do it, uh, uh, I read to the kids every night, um, and it, it, it's, yeah, I, it just, it's one long, every evening splurge of writing the story, and, and, and yeah, that, that's how it, it works for me, and often it is like long evenings that I'll shut the door to mm -hmm. the study, and you know, Vera will do the cooking for the kids, maybe, and I'll, and I'll I, I just need to concentrate on it, and uh, and then read it to the children, and it's and get the feedback from them, and then maybe change a few bits and pieces, and then the research. I quite like doing the research as well because that gives me other ideas. So like with the knuckle hole thing, I, I, so I'm getting into this whole thing with the with a water monster and then I'm doing a little bit more reading. I think, okay, well, let's read a little bit more about legends of water monsters. And then you find out about um, uh, stories about Nigerian water goddesses. And then, you, and, and then it sort of changes the thing. Okay, well, maybe then would it be better if the, if the heroine of the story, if she is actually half Nigerian perhaps, because then it could tie in with her heritage and it could... And, and so, it, uh, yeah, I, 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 I like the research side of it as well, which Elvira's not too keen on either. So, so that, that, that's how I sort of approach it. And, and what about you? Um, yeah, I guess so thinking about it now, I think lots of my writing has come from like some sort of need I have. It's it, at, at my, uh, these ones for the little ones to, to help them learn words. And, and then I guess I just try to think how to do it, what, what's like, interesting for small kids and they're they're um, jumping in the sofa and they're doing stuff um, and they're making sounds boink boink and um, and uh, like with the for the older kids I uh, because I had so many as a, a speech and language therapist who who had trouble with the s sound and the r sound that I I made up stories with lots of you know um, that this little boy, Rulle, goes to the space and, and with a rocket and meets a robot. And, and then we could, um, you know, read them and having fun at, at the same time as practicing those uh, speech sounds. And I had su such a really good luck to be sort of friends with this uh, uh, a, a girl named Karin Holmström who did these lovely illustrations. And then I met um, through my brother, another brilliant illustrator called Michaela Favilla. So she's made then um, my um, um, uh, ABC books with also, again, as a, as a um, uh, logopaed, I, I met like older kids who still have trouble learning the letters and the, the sounds, the, uh, the, you know, the, the matching the, the phonetics. Is it in English? Mm -hmm. Yes, isn't mm -hmm. it? So the letters to the actual uh, sounds. And here, so we had um, uh, that everything makes a sound here. The, the ek put makes e when it opens and, and uh, um, those that's, yeah. it doesn't work in English, no. but... <laughs> but it's but yeah. interesting, I guess, with, with, with those, because you, you're working in more in a, in a collaborative way, aren't you? With the, you know, what are the pictures going to be about? Yes, uh, with the illustrator. Yeah. And I mean, Michaela was brilliant. I just said, I'd like to have lots of, of stuff with F on the F sound, and she just <laughs> filled the, the book. So I guess they, they have come from um, that, that basic need that I have, and then you just let your imagination flow uh, uh, there and and uh, and um, yeah and it's a uh, really uh, for me a very um, I want to say joyous joyous process joyful process mm. that uh, to just uh, yeah work from something that I want and then just build it to something I think kids will really enjoy and and that will be uh, both fun and also could help uh, kids who need it. And um, yeah, and these, I guess, were, they're 
there isn't from my need <laughs> of having a, 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 a just a, 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 you know a, um, something fun to to, to um, have a rest in mm -hmm. and uh, build a world. A world. It's, it's really quite um, the li liberating to, to get to build a world and, and people in it. And then they become like uh, almost like uh, almost alive. I mean, sometimes I, I plan ahead now. Mm. With the first book, I didn't plan ahead uh, super much, and I ended up rewriting it lots of times because you come, you write, okay, and then no, this doesn't work, and then okay, start from the <laughs> beginning and again, and then no, it doesn't work. So, so th since then, I've started to plan more. To, to yeah, it's but very but sometimes yeah. I was going to say it's very impressive because Elvira she does it properly. So she has like on the wall these little post-it notes <laughs> yeah. where she writes uh, things, which is what you're meant to do, really. So it's yeah. Uh, but it, it was often the first one yeah. that I rewrote so many times. But but sometimes still you get to a point and they they're not going to do what you planned because you know they're like mm. people. Mm. So this is not what they would do, mm. and and then you just have to go with that, uh, and mm. it's. Uh, yeah, and I really enjoy writing about the love and, uh, mm. you know, the, it's um, fun. I don't think I could... There is, like, a bit of mystery in, in, in some of my writing and a bit of action, Yeah, with too, the first one, Gr Grin mm. that is quite yeah, mystery. Yeah, yeah. they unearth stuff from mm. this, this stately home and, and the protagonist is, you know, working to, to, uh, in the park there and they mm. unearth secrets and stuff. But still, it's like the, I like that in, in feel good and romance, that you get to, to actually put um, a lot of, of uh, you know, time into that and mm. not just the, the nastier bits of life mm. and society. Mm. Yeah, no, they're, 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 they're a lot of fun, you're, you're, you're the grown-up books, yeah, mm. yeah. A bit racy, some of them as well. But, uh, just, enough. <laughs> just enough. Just enough. Just um, enough. But it's interesting when you're saying about the, the ideas, because um, uh, often with, with the things that, that I write, it's, it's yeah, yeah th th there's something that sparks it off, and I think, and I, but I, I also had an experiment last year that was quite fun, because um, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Ododino, who's the editor, she's also the editor of this uh, children's magazine. It's called um, S uh, Scoop. It's a bit like, um, in Sweden, I guess, uh, KP, the magazine. Um, is it KP or KP? KP. KP, uh, the magazine. And, um, and every uh, edition, every, every issue, that there's a, a theme. And uh, so in, in the latest one, it's um, expressing yourself uh, through music and poetry. But um, last year, they were doing an issue on activism. And uh, uh, Sarah got in touch with me and she said, um, could you do a short story for the magazine about children getting involved, you know, th 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 some sort of activism story. And I've never sort of written to order before, but it was a lot of fun to think, okay, I've got to write a story. And because I'm from Sweden, she, she was saying maybe with some sort of Scandinavian angle. So we ended up writing something set in the north of Sweden in the sort of Sami lands and, and somebody, a company coming to take the oil and, and it was, yeah, it was quite interesting to actually write to order. And it's, as it's only a short story, it, it doesn't need to be so long, but that was quite fun. I'd like to do maybe more of that where people mm. say, okay, write me a story about this. And then you have to just bam, come up with it. But um, it's an excellent magazine. Uh, we, we subscribe to it now and the children, uh, the, the two things they're really happy when they arrive in the post are uh, Corpy and Scoop. Mm -hmm. They can read the mm -hmm. stories and, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, with, with the writing, I think uh, w w what's interesting, especially with Elvira, is that she's doing lo lo lots of different things because as a spin-off, really, from the, from the Ayer and Buyer and the, and the Pippa and Booth things, she, she's been writing songs as well, mm -hmm. which is quite fun because um, they wanted to do, the, the, the publishing company, wanted to do uh, an album of her characters. So um, she was working um, with some musicians and she yeah. was writing the lyrics. It's and that yeah, it's out be. now. So they have, they have a, like a little music video as well. Uh, Aya and Baya, they're called, Aya and Baya, uh, they're called in Swedish. This, uh, this is the English translation. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's sort of gross 
and it's nice. And yeah, it's it's a luxury to be able to to get to write and and uh, see what comes of it. And yeah, we're working on projects, both of us, aren't we? Yeah. But we'll see when they are ready to see the light. Yeah, so I've been working on this thing about uh, the knuckle hole that Elvira has translated into uh, Swedish. But it's, it's interesting with that as well, because um, one of the, yeah, I guess it's one of the issues about, about writing nowadays is the fact that some of the feedback I've had is, is that something I've got to think about is the fact that, that my, my, my heroine, my, my lead character, um, Sassy, she, she's sort of half Nigerian. And there's a lot of discussion now, especially in children's literature, about authentic voice. And is it okay for me, as like a middle-aged white Englishman, to write about uh, a 13-year-old half Nigerian girl? And, and uh, a part of me feels that, okay, well, I, if you're a writer, you can write about anything. I mean, that's the whole point. You make up stories. I mean, with Gribble Bob, I, I'm not a little ugly gob. Well, people <laughs> might. Uh, but in general, I'm not a little ugly goblin. Um, mm. so, but, so I don't know. It, it's an interesting one. But th I can also see the point that people say, you know, this isn't your story to tell. If you're writing about the myths and legends of Nigeria, that's not your story to tell. So. So that, that's something I'm thinking about and thinking, yeah, maybe there's a point there. Maybe I shouldn't do it. Maybe I should do it this way. Maybe I should. So it's a thing I struggle with because I, I can see the truth of it. And I can see that you do have to respect people's cultures and, 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 and where they're coming from and their stories and that they are their stories to tell. But as a writer, should I not be allowed to, to make up any stories? So I don't know. I, I, I'm a little bit confused about that. So I'm, I'm thinking. And it's also a shame. I, I think because we talked about this, you know, at home. When there's also uh, uh, because obviously you write in the voice of a, a little uh, blonde girl. Yeah, little blonde. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, yeah. in here. Yeah. That it also feels almost wrong to to change this girl's, you know, f mm. just because of that from in the other book. I mean, mm. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 but it's obviously it has to be done with respect yeah. and it would be lovely if, if you know and also I, I guess a lot of the criticism might come fr from uh, also that that um, publishers need to pick up authors from all ways mm. of uh, life and everywhere and uh, so that, that it's not just yeah and, 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 and that's true. I mean, that, that, that has been a big, a big issue, I think, in, in children's literature, that, that there is, well, any, any literature, but especially in children's mm. uh, literature, that, that sort of BAME, the BAME community is not uh, represented in terms of the children's literature, in terms of black characters, Asian characters. I mean, mm. you, you don't have that as much. And, 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 the, and the authors as well aren't from that community, and, and that isn't good. You want people from every uh, community writing books for children of every community. So, uh, and yes, so it, it, uh, maybe I shouldn't take up the space that somebody else can have who is from that community. So th th that, that's, that's, that's an issue too. Yeah, mm. so, but, but then your good stories wouldn't be told. Yes. It's just I want to add more instead <laughs> yeah, of taking you that's away. That's true. If I so, 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 but so anyway, so I've written this uh, second one. We're trying to find a home for. At, at the moment, and uh, I've I've started a, another one, which is more sort of Scandinavian, and it's uh, about um, what might happen uh, at uh, on, on a midsummer island, where uh, cousins from England come over to visit their Swedish cousins, and on at midsummer, and maybe there are things on the island that go back into the history, and it, so it's some sort of midsummer mystery fantasy world there where they go off into another. Uh, and another world behind, because in, in, it's interesting, because I, I, with, with my stories, a lot of it is about um, secret worlds or, or sort of things existing below the surface that you didn't know were there. So in Gribble Bob, you go through the other side of the veil and there's another world. And in, in, in the one, I, uh, in, in um, Ebony Woodhead is not a witch, that's the name of the, of the second one. There you find that there's like you go into the knuckle hole and there's something else there, a hidden world there. And, and with the Midsummer one, there's another world there. Um, and I think I was thinking about it. I was doing some self-analysis, which is never a good idea, I suppose, but I was doing some self-analysis. And I was thinking maybe part of it is the fact that my, my sort of background is a little bit strange in that uh, up until I was, what, 31, 32, 
I, I just thought I was, you know, I'm, I'm David, I'm a single child, I, I, I've got um, one uh, older brother, he's much older than me, so I, I, I was like a single child because, an only child, because he wasn't, he wasn't living there. But then when I was 30, I found out that my, gra my parents were actually my grandparents, and my brother was actually my father, and his first wife was actually my biological mother as well. So, so it, and all this had been going on around me, and I didn't know it. All the family knew, apart from me. So there was this like hidden world around me, like the other side of a wall that I didn't know was there. So I guess it's sort of like when I'm writing the stories, I'm sort of exorcising that part of me inside, the fact that, yeah, that there were secrets going on when I was a child that everybody knew that I didn't know. So, so now when I'm writing, I write about s sort of secrets mm. and hidden things. And so, so maybe it is a way of, I don't know, getting it out of me, perhaps. Um, so, so, yeah, that's, that was where the, 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 the writing helps you become like a, a psychoanalyst of yourself. I, I, it's interesting because with the children now, one gets a bit of inspiration from, from them because I've always had the, 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 the sort of feedback um, with, with the stories that I, I read them, the chapters every night. But recently, uh, Tilly, uh, our daughter, um, she's said she wants to write and she started to write little stories and draw them. And some of the things she comes up with are really good. And I think, wow, that's, uh, she came <laughs> up with the, the name, uh, um, the, 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 the character of a book was Lily Wednesday. I think Lily Wednesday is a fantastic name for, mm. for a character and, and what yeah. she was doing. And, and, um, and it's really nice. She draws them and she writes them. And, 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 and to see her so enthusiastic about telling the story and about writing the story. And she's been doing it on the, on the computer as yeah. well, hasn't she? Yeah. You've been showing her how to... And she's very good. And I think, I mean, sometimes I see in her takes stuff that, you know, I learned as an adult. <laughs> this, you know, show, show don't, don't tell, tell and yeah. stuff. And she's, you know, got it. It's really yeah. clever. Yeah. yeah. And Sam as well. I mean, at school, he, 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 he's not as into the writing, I don't think. He, he's, he loves reading. He's been reading Animal Farm and Call of the Wild and all these oh, things. But he, he says he doesn't like it, but when he actually has the tasks and he does it, then well, he yeah. does like it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and so he had to, he, did, um, he, he wrote one called, just now, called The Catastrophe, mm. because we, we had a catastrophe last year. We were gonna get a cat, and, mm. but we found out he was allergic, yeah. so we had the cat from a, an animal yeah, shelter. Yeah, we just had it for a few. And then we had to take it back, and it was heartbreaking, and he wrote about it, and it was so, Emotional, wasn't it? The way he wrote it. Yeah, yeah, the way he wrote about it. So it, it, you get sort of inspiration from them. And, and you hope, hopefully, maybe we can prove that fortune teller, maybe she, she wasn't totally, or she wasn't wrong about living here and what have you, but about one of the children being, being a, a writer. But even if they aren't, it, it, it doesn't matter if they enjoy doing it, if they want to do it. And it's so much fun to see them have that creative spark inside them. And, and to want to write and to want to tell their stories. And just reading. I mm. mean, as a, as a speech and language therapist, the, this, the, the, the effect of somebody learning to read and wanting to read and reading, mm. that, that is so important for, for you know, f for learning and for living. And you, you uh, through books, don't you? You, mm. you, your vocabulary grows, but you learn mm. about life and about mm. other people and about yourself, and mm. and it's also all the joy you get. Mm. So, it really is. It's just, um, yeah, if you can inspire kids to, to read, and and that I I learned from my kids. Even if I you know, um, have worked with kids from, for a long time, but but this. Um, I got almost surprised on how much kids need to read in order to be really fluent in reading. Mm. They, you know, they, they get it and they can sound out words and they, but, but in order to just read for joy, they have to read lots, lots, mm. lots, lots, much more than I actually mm. thought before I saw my own kids' uh, reading development that you, you see so close hand in a way. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's uh, interesting yeah, to see. Just that. wish that they, all kids, find books that that speak to them and that they really mm. enjoy. And there are some fantastic uh, children's books out at the moment. I mean, uh, Pushkin, uh, children's that they have a lot of really good uh, writers at the moment. Um, 
uh, H.S. Uh, Norrup. Uh, she's written some really good books, The Missing Barbara Ghazi, and, 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 and the children really enjoy hear, reading those. So there's a lot of really good children's authors out there at the, at the moment. Um, and it is fun to, to read them with the kids. And uh, so, yeah. And well, yeah, yes. <laughs> I just had another thought that this society today is so much stress, isn't it? It's stress for kids and it's stress for us and there's so mm. much that needs to be done. And then we have our phones and we have our screens and, and I don't think they don't de-stress us. It's just more and more and more and more. Mm. That, that actually if, if I go to myself, <coughs> if I feel really stressed about things, if I read for a while, mm. I, I wind down. And it's not the same with Netflix or, or films. Or it's, it's another thing mm. because I guess you, you can't think about 32 other stuff and you're, you're, you, you just mm. end up in the story. And, mm. and I think it's, mm. it's important both for kids mm. and for us mm. adults. Yeah, and it's true, and it is, it's really nice when you, 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 you walk into the living room sometimes and the children aren't sitting there on their phones. Oh, or they because we have forbidden well, them, we have forbidden them. the phones. I know, but, 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 if, but even sometimes, if when, like, like the, when they're allowed to, sometimes. Well, never. When so, they're yeah, sometimes to. they do. I've seen it on a Saturday. No, it's because I've taken their phones. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, dear. But that, I think so. I think another <laughs> example of the hidden... <laughs> <laughs> behind the wall, I didn't realize. So no wonder I have to write all these stories. But I think, uh, no, I think, uh, uh, unfortunately, if, if it's between the phone or the tablet mm. and a book, they mm. would... Okay, but if, if they don't have the tablet yeah. or the book, then, then it's lovely to, to see. Book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You see them sitting there. Uh, I mean, mm. if you come in and Tilly's mm. reading like Scoop magazine or Call P mm. or Bamze mm. and, and uh, Sam's reading one of the books mm. he's reading or he's reading his, his Kalyanka mag uh, comics, whatever. It, mm. it doesn't matter. They're, they're there and they're really into it. And it's, mm. uh, it's fantastic to, mm. to, to, to sort of see that. And it's nice when they tell you stories as well. Like uh, Tilly makes up her stories and she tells me stories and it's nice. To, 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 to oh, hear now that. I feel bad that I said that they would never choose a book. Maybe they would, very sometimes. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think. So. think. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and yeah, and, and they like to hear the stories at night. I mean, it's, it's nice that, and I hope that doesn't stop, that even though that they're getting older, they st the, 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 the bedtime story is still like important. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And also, it's, it's, isn't it, that we, we as a human race need to be learn to deal with all these screens mm. and stuff and we as adults we're better at uh, actually deciding and putting them away because you know mm. and doing something else because it's it's better than to be but but kids still need help to put them away sometimes because it's not so easy I no think. no i mean they're very yeah. addictive and, and as yeah. soon as you do then you know other stuff is interesting mm. too uh, and books and Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I, I think that, that that's all you can do, is it? You can try and encourage the children to, to, to read yeah. and to put the books in their hands or the comics in their hands. And yeah, and also, maybe, mm. yeah, uh, yes, we can do, lo and, and us reading, mm. we're uh, uh, role models, aren't we? Mm. And uh, also, uh, yeah, just uh, maybe just by limiting screen time a mm. little. I'm not... Uh, you know, obviously it's it's lovely. You can do a bit of it, mm. but you need to do a, a bit of lots of things mm. in life to to actually feel good. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah. But I think that yeah, I mean, stories are never going to stop. Stories are always going to go on. I mean, uh, that, that's that's one of the lovely things that the fact that all the fairy tales they go back, you know, thousands of years, and uh, they're going to carry on going and. And the power of a good story is always going to be there. And it's, it's I mean, one of your favorite authors is, is Jane Austen, mm. isn't it? You've always loved her. Mm. And, and you look now at, at sort of every generation, every, there's a new Jane Austen adaptation or somebody's written a book that's a, 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 a new Pride and Prejudice theme. It's, it, the, the, a good story will live on and it, it, it never dies. And we're always going to have that. I mean, that's, that's important to have, have those stories. Mm. And it's... Uh, it's always interesting though with the fairy tales because when I tell the, the, the fairy tales, I always tell them the proper way. So like the little pigs, 
they get eaten. I'm sorry. But when Elvira tells them, no, well, they ran away and they of got... Course, so, they so again, live happily in the woods. Yeah, so it's interesting. We have our different ways of, 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 of dealing with it. But, so it That's why I, like, I write pink books. Yes, yeah, so the pink books and, the, and I write blood red books here. But it, it, it's, yes, it, it, it doesn't matter. If you, that, that's, that's, that, I mean, that's quite interesting, isn't it? It's, you, you can adapt to the stories. You have the basic story and you can adapt it if you want. And if you have a child who is a little bit nervous about things, you can, you can change it or you can tell them what's going to happen. So it, it's, stories lend themselves to adapting and, and, and changing through the years and, 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 and living on. Mm. And stories are but that's interesting. I wonder why. I, I guess I really want, because life is sometimes tough, mm. I really want that the reading to be, you know, nice. <laughs> and and uh, to give you, you know, a sense of, you know, uh, and because in real life, when we saw uh, like dead sheep, mm -hmm. we were at a sheep farm with the kids, <laughs> <laughs> and there were, you know, a, a pile of dead old sheep, mm -hmm. but they had died and they were clearly mm -hmm. dead. And, and <laughs> Sam wondered, what's that? And he said, no, no, they're just <laughs> sleeping. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there, I, I, you know. There you were honest. Exactly. Yeah. No, sorry, Sam, they're not sleeping. But it's, they, actually, it, they grew very old and then they, they died. died yeah. Yeah, it's so it's so funny <laughs> with, the, with, the, with the happy endings, though, because that, that's what it's been a real pleasure uh, talking to you, um, Magnus. It's, um, it's been a lot of fun uh, coming here and talking about stories and, uh, and sharing our, our books. Um, hopefully, uh, you might be tempted to uh, pop out and see if you can find uh, a copy and read a copy. Um, we think they're quite good, don't we? So we do, yeah. yes. But um, yeah, uh, keep on reading, keep telling stories. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Really? Yes. Really nice to meet you.